Hey everyone, it's Kelly. I'm back again with another scrap chat video. I don't record these types of videos very often, but I received such wonderful comments and questions after my last video on the changes that are going to be happening with my channel this coming year. And I just wanted to hop on here and do another chit chat video where I answered your questions. And again, I want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to comment on that video. I know that a few people were disappointed with the changes that will be coming and I completely understand that and I thank you for being honest. I know that most of you started following me and subscribing to my channel because of my 12 by 12 layouts and I do want to assure you that they are not going anywhere. There's just going to be fewer of them. So I know in February that I will have at least two 12 by 12 scrapbook process videos because I said yes to guesting for all to new back in October for February. So there will be at least a couple videos that month. So stay tuned for those. But I do hope that you will continue to follow me and watch my planner type videos. I think that the planner is going to be so much fun and I'm really excited about it. And I tend to be a little bit more creative and to just be more inspired when I'm having fun. So I'm excited to see where this is going to take me. So with that said, I was asked a lot of great questions that I want to cover in this video and I will have a blog post that will have bullet points for all of these things that I mentioned today. If you want to head there and use that as a reference point, you definitely could. So make sure to leave a link to that in the description box below. I did make some notes because I want to make sure that I stay on track and that I do get the questions answered that I was asked. And before I really get into that, I do want to talk a little bit about how and why I decided to start using the Happy Planner as a memory keeping system. I was never really into planners. I kind of would just avoid that area in Michael's and Joanne and I just, it, it, decorating a planner just never really appealed to me. And I never really even took into consideration that it could be used as a memory keeping system with photos and journaling like a scrapbook or like a Project Life album. And I happened to come across a video on Amy Tangerine's channel earlier in the summer. So I would say it was probably around June. And I had really been considering at that time cons switching my scrapbooking style to a Project Life style scrapbooking with the pocket pages because I was really feeling a need to document our everyday stories in a little bit more detail. I really enjoy 12 by 12 scrapbooking, but I enjoy it for the artistic side of it. I like to play with the papers and the stickers and the embellishments and create dimension and use mixed media and just have a lot of fun, but I don't do a lot of storytelling with my 12 by 12 layouts and I was just feeling the need for a change. So as I was thinking about Project Life, I was thinking, I'm still going to have to make such an investment. I have some Project Life cards, but they're older and I think that I would want newer product. And then I'm still going to run into the problem with the albums. I was still going to have large albums. Even if I did the nine by 12 size, I'm still going to have an abundance of them. So I was just watching YouTube one day, still kind of feeling like I needed to make that change, but just didn't know what it was going to be. I decided that Project Life was not going to be the way to go. And I watched that video on Amy Tangerine's channel and she was collaborating with the Happy Planner. And something about that video, I don't even remember if she used a photo in the spread she was sharing, but something about that video, it just clicked with me. I can use this for photos and storytelling. And I know that there were people already out there doing it, but like I said, it was not something that I ever even thought about. I didn't even think to look that way or think to use a planner in that way. And there are, like I said, quite a few people who do that. So what I'm doing is not new. It's not something that I invented or that I created, but it is something that I am greatly enjoying. So that's kind of where the process started for me. So now let's go ahead and jump into the tips to get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is decide on the size of Happy Planner or the size of the planner that you want to use. Happy Planner has many different sizes. In my personal opinion, I think that the classic size or the big Happy Planner 
would be the easiest to use for scrapbooking and a project lifestyle album. Like I use it, I use it as daily memory keeping. And I think that those are the two easiest sizes. Now, my next tip kind of ties in with my first tip. And my next tip is you really need to decide how you're going to print your photos. The Big Happy Planner, the boxes measure two by three, which is a fairly common size of a photo. But for the classic Happy Planner, they measure 1.5 by 2.4, which is a, not a common, it's not a common photo size. So it takes a little bit more investment to get your photo size correctly to fit that size box. And I use Photoshop to do that. And I will have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I edit my photos, how I get my photos transferred from my phone to my computer, and then how I get them from my computer into the Photoshop template that I created. And I will show you how to create that template in the video as well. So that will be coming up tomorrow. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely stay tuned for that. But Printing your photos, you do not want that to become an obstacle. You want it to be easy. So if a two by three size is easier for you, then I think that the Big Happy Planner may be the way to go. If the digital load or the, if Photoshop's not really your thing or using a computer is not really your thing where you're gonna have to really play with getting the photo sized correctly for the classic Happy Planner, then I would definitely say go with the Big Happy Planner. You definitely wanna make this as easy as possible because any daily or weekly type documenting can become, I don't wanna say overwhelming because I do not feel overwhelmed whatsoever, but if you feel like it's difficult, then it's not something you're going to wanna to do. So you definitely wanna keep that in mind when you're deciding what type of planner to use if you're gonna be using photos with that planner. So tip number three is do not overbuy. It is so easy to fall into wanting all the things. If you follow any planner people, then they typically use multiple planners for multiple things. I would recommend only starting out with a single planner. Do not buy a ton of different sizes and a ton of different planners to use for different things. I would wait and start with one, wait to see what your style is, wait to see what you're gonna use the planner for, and then decide if you need a second planner. I also would avoid buying a ton of sticker books in the beginning i started out with just a few sticker books when i bought the happy planner the happy planner website was having a buy one get one free so i got a couple sticker books there and then i think i picked up one more at michael's and that amount of sticker books worked really well i now have a bunch bunch more because i went shopping on black friday and then i also received some as christmas gifts so it is something that i would recommend less is more in the beginning if you're curious what type of sticker books to get, I would start with a, I have a few here actually, let me grab those. I would start with uh, colorful boxes, that's a great one. It has journaling spots and lots of different colors. So no matter what type of photos you're using, there are colors that will match. There's also quotes and in this colorful boxes that I have, there are some florals in there as well, which florals just make me happy. So that was a great buy for me. I would also recommend getting a seasonal book. Seasonal books cover all the seasons and pretty much all of the holidays and they're broken down into sections within the book. So there's a section for spring, there's a section for summer, winter, fall, and then all of the holidays within those seasons are in there as well. So. A great one is this orange seasonal book. This I picked up actually at Walmart. So there are happy planner supplies at Walmart also if you were not aware of that. And then a, the third sticker book that I would recommend getting is one that just makes you happy. When you look at it, you just love what's included in the sticker book. I really love florals and hearts and watercolor designs. So um, I grabbed this sticker book and bring it a little bit closer to the camera so you can see it. I grabbed this sticker book from the Happy Planner site. This was one of the buy one, get one that I got when I bought my Happy Planner. So just pick a few sticker books and go from there. And then as you start to Happy Plan, your style will develop and you'll know if sticker books are something that you enjoy using or if you'd rather use scrapbook product. I kind of mix both in my Happy Planner. And then you'll also need 
some basic supplies like a paper trimmer, scissors, adhesive, pens, those type of things. But if you're already scrapbooking, those are things that you have in your stash. I would avoid purchasing punches in the beginning unless you know for sure that's something that you're going to use. There is a weekly punch that punches out the boxes. So if you're wanting to use scrapbook paper, you could just easily punch it. Or uh, if you want to punch your photos, you could do that as well. I have the punch and I've only used it on one spread and I've been happy planning for almost six months now. There's also a punch that punches the binding, so where the discs are, so you can put your own inserts in there. So like if I wanted to include Aiden's report card or something like that, I could punch it and then just easily put it into the Happy Planner. And I have only used that punch once. So it's definitely not something you have to have when you start out. Again, I would kind of let your style develop and see if that's something that you will be using or if it's not something you need. Uh, washi tapes and things like that. I personally love using washi tape, but I know that there are planner people out there who do not like to use washi tape. So again, I would wait until you find out what your style is on whether or not that's something you want to make an investment in. Okay, so the next thing that I was asked is how I stay on track and how I stay up to date and how I stay organized when it comes to using the Happy Planner as a project lifestyle album. And I know for myself that project life can seem very intimidating and I know it's supposed to be a more simple way to scrapbook and to document your memories, but just something about it feels so intimidating and I'm not sure what it is. I think that it really may be the daily or the weekly memory keeping, but the thing is I don't feel overwhelmed or intimidated by using the happy planner. So. I'm not sure where that connection happens with me when I think Project Life, but I do have some tips for staying on track and keeping up to date when it comes to using the Happy Planner. So tip number one would be to keep your photos all in one place. I only use my phone for the photos for my Happy Planner and I have a system that works really well for me that I use to get my phone photos to my computer and then get them into the template. And again, I will share more on that tomorrow, but it just works really well. I think that if I were using multiple devices, if I was using my phone and a point and shoot camera and a DSLR, and I was trying to figure out what photos were where and how I'm gonna do this, that it would be much, much more complicated. And this is all about keeping it as simple as possible for me. So definitely keeping my photos all in one place works well. The second one or the second tip that I have is batch editing and batch printing. This is something that works really well for me, but it may not work well for everyone. And what I do is I wait until the month has completed before I edit and transfer my photos from my phone to my computer. So for instance, November 1st, I would have edited and transferred my photos from October because the month was completed and then I would be able to have you plan October. So I'm usually a month behind, but it's done that way on purpose. I like to have some perspective on the month on what photos and what stories really stand out the most. And I think that if I were trying to edit and transfer my photos on a daily or weekly basis that I would end up having a lot more photos than what I would need and that I would be wasting paper when I print. So there are some months that I do have extra photos left over, but it's usually only two or three photos. And I think if I were to do this on a daily or weekly time period that I would have way more than that. I really like to wait until the month is over to kind of figure out what I want to use. Another great kind of side effect of that is when I am looking at the photos for the month before on my phone, it's a great time for me to go through and delete extras and duplicate photos and screenshots and things like that. So I'm able to clear up space on my phone. So it's kind of a win-win doing it that way. And it works really well for me. My third tip is to keep a daily journal. So I have a little book that I keep next to my bed on my nightstand. And I try to every night or at least every other night just jot down memories from the day. So, so, you know, a funny quote that my son said or what stood out to me most, kind of reflect on the day. And it's not in depth, it's usually just a couple little lines. And then when I go to sit down to happy plan, 
I can reference that journal and it just helps me remember what happened throughout the month, especially since I am happy planning a month behind. So if I were to sit down right now and do December 1st, I, off the top of my head, I don't really know what happened that day, but I can look at that journal and have a memory of what happened. Now, not all of the stories and things that I write down in that journal get transferred into my happy planner, but it is a really nice thing to have to reference and to make sure that I do remember the things that I want to put in the happy planner. So that is my third tip on how to stay on track. My fourth tip is to stay organized and to keep your planner supplies out in the open. So I have a cart from Michaels that I use that has all of my planner supplies on it. I do not have to dig out my sticker books. I don't have to look for my washi. My pins are all kept there that I like to use in my happy planner. And it's just easy to roll the cart over to my desk when I'm ready to sit down and happy plan. And I can even roll it out to the living room and happy plan with my family in the room, which I absolutely love that. I love that I am not tied down to my scrapbook room anymore. I can really move it and use it wherever I see fit. If I want to take it out to the dining room, I can do that. It's the supplies are limited, they're basic. I don't have to shuffle through a thousand thickers or dig out a bunch of papers and they're a lot smaller products. The sticker books aren't very large, even though I have <laughs> an abundance of them now. And it's just really easy to use. So I really, really like that. I think that if I were to have to dig out my product for my planner every time I needed to use it, that it just, it wouldn't work for me. I think I would use so much energy and so much time trying to find the things that I want to use that by the time I got it all around and organized that <laughs> I would be done. I'd have to save the planning for another day. So having it all together, having it ready to go is something that really works well for me and something I highly recommend. Another thing that I'd like to talk about are the pros and cons to this type of photo documenting. And I'm going to start with the cons because I only have one and I do have a pretty good list of pros. The only con that I have, and if you have followed my channel for a while or follow me on Instagram or anything like that, then you know that I really like to add a lot of dimension to my scrapbook layouts. That is one of the most fun things for me is being able to add a lot of dimension and a lot of texture to a scrapbook layout. And because the Happy Planner is on a disc system, you are limited on how thick you can make the planner if you want to fit one year in one planner. And I have not added any dimensional elements to my planner. There are no stickers, there are no puppy stickers, there's no chipboard, there's nothing like that in here. I do have one pocket insert that I have added in here. And I will do, once I get December finished, I am going to do a flip through and I will talk a little bit more in detail about the actual products that I like to use in the Happy Planner. So I will show you that in a little bit more detail in a future video, but I don't have really any dimensional elements in here and I am already going to have to get the expander discs because I am running out of room on these current discs and all I have are stickers and I think I have maybe a couple spots where I have scrapbook paper and I have my photos in here. So that's my only drawback to this type of memory keeping is I can't add as much dimension as I would like but I'm okay with it. I think that the benefits definitely outweigh that single con that I have found so far. So I am planning on sticking with this for some time. So let's jump into the pros. The first pro, which I've already touched base on, is the size of the planner. It measures eight by 10, including the spine and the cover, and that is just amazing. I can't even <laughs> begin to tell you space-wise how much this is going to save me, especially because pro number two, I can fit an entire year in one album. I can't even begin to tell you how many scrapbook albums I have and then how thick the pile is that is outside an album because I don't have many more albums to put them into. So I used to scrapbook in chronological order and for 2008, 2009, and 2010, I have three albums per year and they are the three inch spine D ring albums or ring albums. And oh my goodness, so many albums. <laughs> and to think that I can fit this one album on my shelf and have an entire year documented, it just, that's just amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. 
The third pro is I am documenting in a more authentic way. I think that this little album or planner or whatever you want to call it will be more valuable to my family than any other scrapbook I've ever made. It truly documents our day-to-day -day life and what's happening in our life. And those small little stories, I think are really what make up our life. And you know, we're talking, I'm talking about the food that we like and things that we go and do. And a lot of these small little moments would never make it onto a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout because it's just not something that I would put on a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout. Now you most definitely could take these, all of these pictures that I'm using and make 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts. But for me, I can't even imagine how many layouts I would have if I were to take all the photos that I use in the Happy Planner and try to create a layout using all of those photos. So it really is something that it's just genuine and it's authentic. There's only one scrapbook that I can think of that would be as valuable as my happy planner and that is the scrapbook that i made of my son's time in the nicu if you're new to my channel then you may not know this but my son was born premature he was born 14 weeks early and he spent 12 weeks in the nicu and i took photos of him every day and i journaled every day with what was going on with him and then when he came home from the hospital i combined those two things so it really is a day-by-day -day story of his first three months of his life and what we went through and how much of a fighter he was and just you know everything that happened in our lives at that point and i think that that will be very valuable to him as he gets older especially if he were to get married and have kids and i think that's something that they would enjoy seeing and enjoy reading the story of what happened during that time in our life but other than that one scrapbook i really do think that this happy planner is most definitely one of the most valuable forms of documentation that I have when it comes to my scrapbooking. So another pro to this is the disc bound system. I love that I can pull the pages out of the Happy Planner and work on a flat surface every time. I don't have to worry about the spine or the binding getting in my way when I'm writing out my journaling. And then once I'm done, I just, you know, kind of push the pages right back in to the disc system and it's in there. I have not had any issues with the pages tearing. They come in and out really easy and I'm absolutely loving the disc system. And the final pro that I have is that it is so much more portable than 12 by 12 scrapbooking. Like I said, I take my cart out into my living room and I will have you plan out there with my family. I can't even imagine, I, I use a lot of products when I use my 12 by 12 scrapbooks, so that's part of it is I don't really limit myself. And it would, it would just be too difficult for me to gather everything and take it out to my living room if I was 12 by 12 scrapbooking. And I even went to a crop recently with my mom back in December. We have a local scrapbook store that's about 45 minutes from us. And I took my happy planner and worked on that. And I literally took the cart out to my cars, kind of like a Rascog type cart. And I put it in my back seat and I just seat belted it in. And that's what I took. There was no packing. There really wasn't any planning because I had everything ready to go. My photos were printed. It holds my planner. It holds my journal. It holds everything. So it worked out so, so well. And I just love how easy it is to use it. So as you can tell, I'm really excited about this system. So that, I think I've answered all of the questions. If I missed one, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you are a happy memory keeping planner, however you wanna say it, and you're on Instagram or you have somewhere where your projects are public, if you wanna leave a comment below, I would love to check it out. I feel like there aren't as many channels youtube channels and as many people using the planner in this way like i said it's not a new thing but it's just not something i see as often as people using the happy planner as a regular planner so or as a decorative planner i'm not sure what the right term is there but if you do have a memory plan please let me know i would love to check out your work and see what you're doing and if you have like i said if you have any questions please leave them below remember i'll have that video up tomorrow about my 
editing process and my resizing process for my photos. Remember, there is a blog post that ties in with this video, so if you wanna check that out, uh, click the link below. And I hope that we can have another great conversation like we did after my last video. I really, really enjoyed that. So again, thank you all so much for taking time to comment, and I will be back again tomorrow with a new video. All right, hope you all have a great night.